Muy buenos días tengan todos ustedes, sean bienvenidos a la clausura del Congreso Mundial de Neurocirugía organizada por la Walter E. Dandy Society en conjunto con la UNESCO y nosotros como asociación SAIN México. Soy el médico pasante de Servicio Social Diego Alberto Sandoval López, soy miembro de la Comisión de Investigación de SAIN eh, Chapter México. En representación de la Walter E. Dandy Society queremos agradecer al embajador de la PAE UNESCO, Jorge Herrera Ramos, presidente del Congreso Mundial, por la organización de este evento, así como al copresidente profesor uh, Salem y eh, Abdul Rauf, del Instituto de Neurocirugía, fundador presidente del Departamento de Neurocirugía de la Universidad de St. Louis, Missouri, en Estados Unidos, presidente global de la Walter E. Dandy Neurosurgical Society y 17 presidente de la Sociedad de Brain Mapping and Therapeutics. Uh, también queremos agradecer a la doctora Dayanira Capi Casillas, este, presidenta del Student Chapter AANS del IPN, Vice Chairman del World Congress de Neurocirugía, al Dr. Babak Kateb, Presidente de la Society for Brain Mapping Therapeutics, uh, Brain Mapping Foundation, Vice President del Congreso Mundial. Y finalmente, a los directores honorarios del comité, el profesor Nasser eh, Gander y el profesor Marcus Rota. Eh, es un honor participar en este evento. Good morning, welcome to the closing of the World Congress Neurosurgery, UNESCO. Uh, in collaboration with Walter E. Dandy Society in honor of Professor Gassi Yasaragil. Uh, I am Dr. Diego Sandoval, member of the Research Commission of Science Chapter Me Mexico. Uh, on behalf of the Walter E. Dandy Society, we thank the ambassador uh, of UNESCO, ASP.net, uh, Jorge Herrera Ramos, chairman of the World Congress for the organization of this event, uh, as well as the co-chairman, Professor Salem E. Abdul Rauf of the Institute of Neurosurgery. Founding Chairman, Department of Neurosurgical Surgery, St. Louis University, Missouri, USA. Uh, Global President, Walter E. Dandy, Neurosurgical Society. Uh, 17th President, Society for Brain Mapping and Therapeutics. We also want to thank Dr. Dayanira Capi Casillas, President of the Student Chapter AANS, IPN, Vice Chairman of the World Congress of Neurosurgery. Dr. Babek uh, Kateb, President of the Society of Brain Mapping Therapeutics, Brain Mapping Foundation, Vice Chairman of the World Congress, Honorary Chairman of the Committee, Professor Nasser Gandar, and Professor Marcus Rota. It is an honor for us to participate in this event. I'm honored to introduce Dr. Tetsuro Sameshima, attending physician and professor in the Department of Neurosurgery at the uh, Hamamatsu University Hospital in Japan. He has several publications on the field of school-based uh, surgery, which is today's topic, uh, Fundamentals of Operative Techniques in School-Based Surgery for Young Neurosurgeons. Thank you very much, Dr. Tetsuro. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Dr. Tetsuro Samishima from Japan. I'm honored to receive this kind of great opportunity. Um, I thank you, Dr. George Herrera and the other members. Today's uh, my lecture title is Fundamentals of Operative Techniques in Scar-Based Surgery for Young Neurosurgeons. So um, my specialty is scar-based surgery, especially for uh, scar-based meningioma, acoustic neuronoma, uh, pituitary tumor, craniopharyngioma, and the jugular foramen tumors, and so on. Also, I perform the difficult cerebrovascular uh, surgery, especially for a giant thrombosis and the coil compaction aneurysm. In the last three years, I have an experience of the scar based meningioma surgery. Over 60% I perform the posterior fossa uh, meningiomas. Uh, we accept the patient for, uh, came from overseas. Uh, also, I have an um, experience of the surgery in the foreign countries uh, for a difficult case. Uh, also, we accept uh, international visitors. So uh, let me show the, some uh, surgical video clips of mine for young neurosurgeons, like uh, gradient pharyngioma, uh, direct clipping for IC aneurysm. Spinal ridge uh, meningioma, tuberculum zera meningioma, cavernous sinus meningioma, CP angle meningioma, uh, caustic neuroma, uh, microvascular decompression for hem facial spasm and trigeminal neuralgia, uh, brainstem cavernoma, pedocrybal meningioma, 
uh, vertebral arteries from both aneurysm and uh, from, from a magnum meningioma. Now we are learning eight essential points of standard techniques for skull based surgery with our young residents. Uh, first one is orbitodigmatic craniotomy and extrajural drilling and the shaving of front temporal base, uh, optic canal decompression and the removal of the anterior crinoid, elevation of the anterior du uh, temporal dura, so called dura propria and pericabinous approach, and the anterior petrodectomy, uh, lomboid approach, so called Kawase's triangle and the IAC drilling. Mastoidectomy and the combined petrodal approach. Suboxital muscle dissection and uh, how to preserve the OA and V3. And the suboxital craniotomy and the transcondylar, transjugular, transtubacular approach. And, uh, and the high cervical dissection. So, um, this is uh, Professor Binko Dorent. I'm sorry. Um, Professor Binko Dorent um, published uh, uh, this book in 1989. This is one of my favorite textbooks to understand cavernous sinus anatomy and pericabinous sinus approaches. Uh, this, uh, uh, for example, this picture shows a beautiful anatomy to understand the anterior medial approach, so-called Dorent approach. This picture demonstrates cavernous sinus triangles, which means a corridor to the cavernous sinus. Uh, here is the anterior medial Dorent uh, uh, triangle. Here is the medial triangles. Uh, this is superior triangles. This is a Parkinson's triangle. Here is a Marland's triangle. This is a lateral loop. This is a posterior lateral and premiatal and Kawase's triangle, postmiatal. So, um, so first video clip is craniopharyngeal massage using the Dorent uh, triangle. According to the origin, Location and extension, we classify the two several times. Also, we have several approaches for craniopharyngioma, interhemispheric transcarosal, interhemispheric translaminar terminalis, orbitozygomatic trans, uh, zygomatic, pericabinous translaminar terminalis, anterior temporal approach, and endonasal transplendal approaches. So, um, let me show the first video clip. I hope can you see that. This is a small, uh, not so big uh, cranial pharyngioma. I perform the right side uh, frontotemporal craniotomy. You see that. And I'm shaving a uh, temporal dew, uh, base and also orbital unloofing. So you can see the um, meaning orbital band is here, anterior crinoid, superorbital fissure, and the V1, and the temporal, here is the temporal dura, frontal, frontal dura. So I'm elevating this uh, to expose the superorbital uh, fissure. Now I'm performing the anterior crinoidectomy using a high speed drill and then detaching the, from the um, carotid and uh, surrounding uh, tissues, like this. And still, um, I see the optic struct. So uh, sometimes I use a snowpet or a cusa. And then I'm performing the optic nerve decompression. So they are still are elevating a dura propria like this. So you can see the optic knob, uh, oculomotor, uh, tro uh, trochlea, and the V1, V2, V3 is here. And then I'm cutting the dura longitudinally to uh, the uh, la lateral side of uh, optic cis. This one is the optic cis. You see here. And then this white line is a distal dura ring. 
Uh, you see the carotid, internal carotid here. And this, uh, this is a uh, proximal ring, oculomotor, uh, superior fissure, trochlear nerve, and V1 is here. And uh, this is uh, the uh, bingo dolent uh, the textbook. And, uh, you see the ophthalmic artery between C2 and C3. And then uh, I'm performing internal debulking. And also I'm uh, separating from the uh, IC perforator from the tumor membrane. And then you see over there the stalk. This tumor's origin is the stalk. And uh, I'm elevating a tumor capsule from the uh, hypothalamus like this, gently. Also to preserve the superior hypophysial arteries here. And then finally, I remove the tumor totally between the optic nerve and the carotid. This. You see the hypothalamus over there, and you see the stalk here, and the vaginal artery, and the SCA and the P1 like this. The uh, post of the MRI. So, uh, Majority uh, of craniopharyngioma, I chose choose the interhemispheric approach and depend on the lateral side extension. Uh, this is a uh, this case is five year old boy. And I chose an interhemispheric approaches. Uh, his left eye was almost blind preoperatively, and we can expect a recovered recovery of the visual disturbance in middle uh, especially for younger patients. So, uh, anism. And the next video clip is a direct clipping for uh, IC giant anism using a dolent approach. Also, this is a, a simple left uh, front temporal craniotomy. I'm doing uh, our orbital unlooping, and you see the meaning of the band is here. The anterior, anterior cranial is here. here. So I'm cutting a meaning of the band first. And then uh, I could elevate, uh, I could uh, expose uh, expose the super with the fissure more easily, like this. So here is a foramen rotundum, V2. Sometimes we see the bleeding, uh, venous bleeding. And then you see the antenna crinoid here. I'm using high speed rig to remove the antenna crinoid like this. Also, uh, optic canal decompression. So, like this. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm sorry. I, I remove the anterior crinoid like this. And then you see optic strut here. Uh, this is a skull based micro -rongeur. And then stop breathing using a uh, uh, fibrin glue and uh, side cell sometimes. Uh, um, like this, and fibrin glue. This is a fibrin glue. It's very useful to stop the venous bleeding. I'm cutting the dura longitudinally towards the lateral side of optic cyst, like this. So you see the optic nerve and the IC and the proximal ring and distal ring. Like this uh, illustration, you see the optic nerve. So the um, after uh, trap the carotid internal carotid as the neck, and then uh, I made optic carotid space like a previous video case. 
After to, of course, I've, I I did the trapping of the internal carotid artery at the neck, and I ev evacuated blood f uh, f blood from inside the arenum. And my young resident tried to the, uh, perform the uh, direct creep like this. Okay. So uh, this is I'm sorry. So this is a hybrid operation room in our hospital. Uh, he is. He's a chief of an uh, endovascular team, and we can perform the craniotomy at the same time like right here. The meningioma. This is a typical um, uh, spinal ridge meningioma. Uh, this is the right side spinal ridge meningioma, which are engulfing uh, IC and the optic nerve. This patient complained of visual acuity and field disturbance. So let me show a video clip. This is the right side. You see the tumor. And I'm performing the internal debriefing first. So that I, I, I will look at separating from the tumor, uh, from the uh, optic nerve, like this. Using a micro scissors gently. So I'm looking for a PCOM. So you see the uh, IC and uh, M1, and this is the uh, anterocoroidal artery, A1. This is the right side uh, optic nerve, and the uh, this is the chiasma, and the, this is the left side. I see uh, this is a Optic nerve, and you see the. Uh, so now um, I'm detaching from the origin. So you see the stalk over there, and then this is the right side optic nerve. So the, I can move the tumor after detachment of the uh, from the origin. This. So also uh, we need to preserve the uh, small uh, perforator from the IC, so like this. So this is a, a sudden oculomotor, uh, so-called uh, pulse oculomotoris. This tumor already embedded into the pulse oculomotoris. Uh, I need to remove that totally like this. Maybe I need to skip it. And then, uh, yeah, you see, you see that this is the carotid ISIC, internal carotid. Uh, this tumor already uh, embedded under the car carotid. So that I'm elevating the surface of the brain. And the most important is to keep the, preserve the uh, IC perforator. So this is the final view. Uh, you see the uh, right side carotid, A1, and then colloidal, uh, the PCOM, and the vaginal artery, and the SCA, PCA, and uh, chiasm, right side, optic nerve, left side. And this is the final view. I perform the uh, total removal. So, the next one is, uh, this case is uh, also a spinal ridge meningioma extended to the posterior fossa. Uh, his left eye was almost blind. I choose the left front temporal craniotomy and the subtemporal approach and the gross total removal for this case. And his eye recovered to almost normal after surgery. So next one is a uh, tuba. Uh, tubercular sterile meningioma. I chose the left side front uh, temporal approach because his right uh, eye was almost blind. So let me show you a uh, um, video clip. This is the left side. So now I'm performing uh, anterior craniotectomy and optical decompression. 
and then you see the tumor and tumor uh, the engulfing uh, carotid also uh, optic nerve like this I found and then so the, I, I can see the left side optic nerve the chiasma but I don't see the right side optic nerve so tumor invaded to the uh, dura also so I'm uh, elevating a tumor from the surface of a carotid, also from an optic nerve like this, gently. And this is, uh, um, here is a uh, pre-chiasmatic system. I see the bleeding from the tumor. And uh, finally, I found the uh, origin. Here is a uh, tuberculum. There I am. And the still tumor is uh, uh, embedded under the carotid and the optic nerve. So there I need uh, more uh, internal debulking like this using a cruiser. And then finally, I uh, elevate the tumor totally. Like this, the other side the carotid, the right side of the nerve and the chiasma like this, and the stalk is here. The origin is here. This is here is a tuberculosis zerae. So the uh, this patient uh, lateral eyes uh, are recovered to the almost normal after surgery. So next case is cavernous sinus meningioma, not so big one. So that I choose, uh, um, I try to attack the through Parkinson triangle and the Malan triangle for this tumor. Let me show you uh, that video clip. Not so big, uh, that cavernous sinus meningioma. So this is uh, just a leg, simple right uh, frontotemporal craniotomy. I'll skip. So, oh. so the, the, you see the fourth nerve and third nerve is here and the V1. So um, I'm using the surgical space between the fourth nerve and the trigeminal first branch, so called the Parkinson triangle, and the, uh, between the uh, first and the second branch of the trigeminal, so called the Malan triangle. You see a tumor here, here. So I am elevating a tumor from in the inside. I'm pushing that to the lateral side. And then you see the first branch and the second branch of a trigeminal nerve. So internal debulking using a CUSA. This. This is a Parkinson triangle. Uh, here is a Malan's triangle. Still tumor is remained here. I'm using a ring curette. Like this. And uh, also like this. And I stop the uh, bleeding by using a, a surge cell and also fibrin glue. This is a final view. So uh, usually we uh, have uh, two approaches there for posterior fossa, uh, lateral uh, approach and the medial approach. So, the, so you can see that uh, like this, and many, many approaches for lateral approach for posterior fossa surgery. And they also are the anterior petrosal approach and the posterior transpetrosal approach like this. So, um, for CP angle meningioma, uh, we have uh, three major approaches. Uh, retrosigmoid anterior transpetrosal and the combined transpetrosal approaches. 
If the、uh, seven and eighth nerve are located in the ventral, rostral, and caudal portion of the tumor, I mean the, the nerves are located anteriorly, I choose a retro sigmoid approach. If the seven and eighth nerve are located in the dorsal portion, I choose anterior transpetal approaches because seven and eighth nerve always are disturbed of the operative field from a posterior force approach. The tumor is a more Uh, larger and extending the supra and the infra temporarily, I choose a combined transpetrol approach. So, the,、um, we have some surface landmark of a temporal bone.、Uh, also, we,、uh, we can touch、uh, master the chip, diga screw groove, anterior and asterion and inion. And, and we can identify the transverse and the sigmoid sinus. Also, transverse sinus and the sigmoid sinus junction will be 10 millimeter anteriorly and 5 millimeter、uh, below from the asterion. So, retro sigmoid approach.、Uh, let me talk about the retro sigmoid approaches.、Uh, this one is a、uh, tri、uh, craniotomy for、uh, trigeminal、uh, neuralgia. This is uh, for a、uh, hem facial spasm. This is for a、uh, CP angle meningioma and acoustic、uh, tumors. I usually two bar hole and drill out the posterior border of the sigmoid sinus and the jugular bar.、Uh, this is、uh, for large tumor, especially for large foramen magnum meningioma. Depends on the case, I is a、uh, mastoidectomy and t r a n s c o n d i a And for a magnum decompression. The basic、uh, concept of the approach is a transcondylar exposure to ventral、uh, of a medulla, which are、uh, first described by、uh, Dr. Wolgan f a s i g a r in 1976 and later was elaborated by、uh, Dr. Helmut Bertranfi with clinical application. This is my uh, lateral uh, portion. So, the,、uh, usually I need ABR,、uh, facial nerve monitoring, MEP monitoring for posterior force surgery, and a good medical engineer. So,、uh, retro sigmoid approaches. The retro sigmoid approach is very useful for a CP angle meningioma. Neurinoma, epidermoid, microvascular decompression for facial spasm, and the trigeminal neuralgia, and the brainstem cavernoma. So, meningioma. So, this is a typical CP angle meningioma.、Uh, seven and eighth nerve located in ventral of the tumor. I perform the simple retro sigmoid approaches. So、this is a similar case, and we have a chance to improve the、uh, patient hearing. So, let me show you a video. So after debulking, internal debulking,、uh, I op already opened the、uh, posterior wall of ISC. I am elevating a tumor for the normal、uh, nerves like this. So, much easier. Uh, than acoustic neuroma to separate the tumor. So you see the super vestibular and the inferior vestibular.、Uh, we, we can see the normal fibers of the internal audio canal. So、oh, next one is、uh, uh, petrotentary meningioma. Also, I choose the retro sigmoid approach. Also, this is a、uh, uh, petrotentorial meningioma. I choose also a retro sigmoid approach. So, neuroma,、uh, about the acoustic neuroma. This is my favorite skin incision and the craniotomy and for acoustic neuroma. So, they also,、uh, this picture demonstrates a landmark for skin incision and the craniotomy. And、uh, I Told you,、uh, usually I made a two bar hole is enough and so no need to expose the sigmoid sinus. This is a dural incision. 
For example, uh, this young lady uh, is a uh, 30 years old woman. I left a small piece of the tumor uh, along to the facial nerve to prevent uh, facial nerve palsy. This is also a high school girl with hydrocephalus. I also am 50 years old woman. Uh, she need BP shunt surgery after removal of the tumor. So this uh, is uh, like, uh, 11 years old girl and the high jugular valve disturbed uh, opening uh, ISC and sometimes uh, uh, costiconeum has a rich vascularity. Let me show you a surgical video clip of a uh, caustic neuroma. Uh, this is the uh, uh, right side, uh, a caustic neuroma. So uh, dural, after dural uh, opening, so I, I don't need to export the sigmoid sinus and also opening the uh, foramen magnum. You see the 11 now first. I cut the uh, arachnoid and I evacuate the CSF uh, to slack the cerebellum. And then you see the uh, tumor surface like this. I'm looking for the facial lab, not uh, stay a surface of the uh, tumor. So I opening a posterior wall of a IFC so like, like this. So I'm using a, a bone chip of the uh, sonopet. Also internal debulking as much as possible using a kuza. So I'm trying to remove some of the fans of ISC. So I'm looking for the uh, facial nerve over there. Here is a facial nerve. This one is a facial nerve. The remnant of the super vestibular. So I'm going to the uh, brain stem uh, to elevate the tumor uh, from the seven and eight nerve like this gently, and then also I need to preserve the uh, perforator running on the surface of the brain stem like this, and I perform the total removal like this. So. Oh, this one, uh, fortunately, I preserved the hearing uh, for this girl. Also, um, she can uh, use a cell phone as a tumor side. And so, uh, the preserved, uh, to preserve the hearing, we have to remain the tumor capsule. So, this video shows a uh, Internal debulking. After internal debulking, I mean I remove the tumor from inside of the tumor membrane like this. Is I left the tumor membrane to to pre prevent uh, hearing and facial nerve function like this. So oh, this one is a, a small internal canalicular acoustic tumor. So usually, uh, some uh, doctor uh, choose the middle force approaches. Uh, middle half force approaches. Uh, the, the approach, I think, approach to use often depend on the size and the location of the tumor, the preoperative hearing level and the surgeon's preference. In general, the middle force approach is excellent for exposing the founders of internal auditory canal and uh, is therefore uh, advantageous for uh, small inter intracanalicular tumors. But it, is this advantage for large tumors that have extended over large CP angles? This is my paper that I'm about to uh, describe about that. So, oh, this is, a, uh, I choose a little sigmoid approach for uh, such small AT and more easy to preserve hearing level. And also a similar case, uh, I will show you the video clip, the small one. 
So they will see the A snap uh, over there, facial nerve, 9, 10, 11. I, I put the uh, facial nerve, uh, continuous facial nerve uh, monitor. I open the posterior wall of ISC. I'm elevating the tumor from the, uh, here is a super vestibular. This is a infra vestibular. I think this tumor uh, origin is infra vestibular. So normal fiber. Still I see the normal fibers. I'm leaving, remove the tumor from the founders of IAC. So like this. So you see the facial lab. Uh, this is a, a, a super vestibular. I think that here is a infra vestibular. So like this. Unfortunately, uh, this patient's hearing is preserved. Trigeminal neuroma, uh, depend on the tumor location on the extension. Uh, we have a major three approaches. Uh, the first one is the middle fossa, the lateral sigmoid, and the anterior transpetrosal approaches. This young guy, uh, complained of facial numbness and the six nerve palsy. Uh, six, so then I choose a middle fossa approach for this tumor. Uh, six nerve palsy and recovered completely within six months. Also, I choose a, a middle fossa approach for this kind of tumors. And the majority of this case, the tumor is uh, uh, located in the posterior fossa. I chose a retrosumoid approaches. This is, I uh, choose the anterior petrosal approaches for, also did I choose the anterior transpetrosal approach for this, uh, uh, trigeminal schwannoma. So microvascular decompression. Uh, here is a skin incision on the craniotomy. Uh, I'm sorry, craniectomy for hem facials and the trigeminal nerve. So the, usually I need just a, a finger chip, uh, dural opening. This is uh, my, uh, lateral, uh, position. So let me show you, uh, at a uh, microvascular uh, decompression for hem facial spasm. And he suffered a hem facial spasm a long time, and it was difficult to open the, his left eye. So let me show you a very clip like this, so like this. We Japanese had uh, many uh, hem facial spasm patient. So skin issue like this. Uh, sometimes I um correcting the first job. Uh, uh, Stenocryd mastoid muscle to do that closure. So I'm making a bar hole just above the inferior nuchal line. This. So do that opening. You see the cerebellum. I cut the arachnoid uh, just uh, between the uh, 11 snub and the cerebellum. You see the 9, 10, 11, and the vertebra is here. Everything a VA from the root exit zone of the facial nerve. Uh, now I'm using a teflon ball to make a space between a bed vertebra and the medulla like this. And, uh, then attach it to the petrous dura using a teflon ball and a fibering glue like this. So then finally I can see the, uh, root exit zone of a facial nerve. And also elevating a VA and a PICA uh, from the root exit zone of a facial nerve like this. Dural closure. So the post -op -dural image. So next one is a vertebral uh, trigeminal uh, difficult case of a trigeminal neuralgia because the offending artery is large and curved and compressed strongly from inside. Let me show you the video clip of this case. 
this is the left side. So I made a bar hole. I just a little bit, I opened the widely uh, using a, a high speed drill to the opening. And you see the battery bar here. And over there, trigeminal nerve. So the, I'm trying to move to, uh, to other, uh, medial side. Far from a trigeminal nerve. So here is a, a Meckel's cape. This. So now I'm trying to move a battery battery to other inside to detach from the trigeminal. So like this. So very difficult case. And coagulate the petrous bone, uh, petrous dura. They're using a uh, teflon and fiber glue like this. I try to uh, attach the butter body to the uh, teflon like this to the uh, petrous dura like this. And then you see the trigeminal over there. I usually I'm waiting a 30 second like this. Let's keep this. And then finally, um, battery RTD is far from the uh, trigeminal like this. The trigeminal, I mean the trigeminal is free from the particular artery. So, a uh, brainstem cavernoma. Uh, this patient complained of progressive gait disturbance. MRI demonstrates a brainstem cavernoma and the internal bleeding and uh, located in the right side dominance. So I choose uh, I chose the light retrosigmoid approach and try to decompress and coagulate the feeding artery. Uh, so th this is uh, between the uh, trigeminal and the seven and eight. I'm cutting in the uh, brainstem from here, and you see the tumor capsule. I'm separating a tumor capsule. Uh, separating a tumor capsule from a normal tissue and a coagulated feeding artery. Now I'm performing a decom internal decompression. So over there, over there, blue one is a, a venous barrix. So usually we don't need to touch the venous barracks. And so over there, venous barracks. Just coagulate and uh, uh, feeding gut. This patient get recovery to the normal after surgery. So also, uh, uh, I will skip this one. Maybe uh, okay. taking time. The anism. So, um, this, uh, then, so, oh, sorry, So this is, uh, uh, thrombus, large, um, uh, thrombus anism. So I, uh, let me show you, uh, something is wrong. I missed it. Yeah, I tried to the decompression the, the, for this, uh, thrombus, vaginal bas artery thrombus anism. And then, so the uh, endovascular surgery for laser anism as an additional treatment. I, maybe I, I, I will skip this one. Oh, uh, it works. So this is a seven and eight, uh, trigeminal over there, inside six nubs here. 
and 910 is here. So I'm cutting inside of the uh, thrombosis uh, uh, anism between the trigeminal the 7 and 8. And I'm performing the internal debulking as much as possible like this. So I don't have enough time and I'll skip and uh, I don't so Also, uh, between the 7 and the 8 and the lower crane nerves, and, uh, I'm performing internal debulking as much as possible. So that I'm elevating to uh, animal wall from the brain stem like this, but the artery you see. And then, so as much as possible, I performed, and you see the uh, pulsating, uh, pulsating of the uh, uh, anism, like this. And then, um, our endovascular team uh, performed the uh, uh, coiling so for our residual uh, anism, like this. So, transcondylar approaches. Uh, my favorite skin incision is uh, like A, Regi S incision. Uh, so the, this is a, a educational video for uh, uh, the so, sub uh lateral neck dissection. I'll show you uh, for my resident. This is the left side. I'm uh, detaching from the uh, super nuclear line. Uh, this is a sternocleid mastery muscle. This is a sprenius. I'm exposing a OA, occipital artery, uh, between the semi uh, sprenius and semi spinalis muscle. Like this. I'm reflecting the sprenius capitis muscle. You, you see the sprenius capitis, longitudinal capitis is here. So this is a superior nuchal line, inferior nuchal line, longitudinal uh, long long muscle. And uh, you see the digastric muscle is here. The OA is here. This. I can please have the uh, occipital artery if we need to the bypass surgery, like this. And then uh, you see that here is a uh, super oblique, uh, Lexus capsis posterior major, inferior oblique, so-called suboxial triangle. Inside of a suboxial triangle, uh, you see the vertebral artery. So this is a uh, super oblique muscle detached from the inferior nuchal line. This is a lexus capsis posterior major. And then uh, we can preserve the V3, VA safely, like this. So this is a V3. Okay, and the next one is a transcondylar transtubercular exposure. It's also left side. You see that this is his occipital condyle. You see the blue, blue line is a hypoglossal canal. Here is a jugular tubercle. This is a jugular bulb, sigmoid sinus, posterior border. And uh, I um, drill out um, jugular tubercle. You see the VA here. And the hypothesis canal is here, so that we can make a wide uh, operative field like this. Also for uh, uh, for our magnum meningioma. So this approach is uh, very useful for what uh, for our magnum meningioma, like these pictures. Sorry, it's not working. Oh, sorry. Something wrong. Oh, so 
story. Let me, let me show you another one. So for a member of the I will skip this video. Also, uh, this is a VA thrombosis anism. So let me show you the video clip. This patient and the suffered the gate disturbance. Left VA thrombosis anism and compressing to the medulla. So patient could not work progressively. So the other side of VA was covered there. Uh, and I left a PICA, so I decided the trapping and the total removal. This is the left side uh, transcondylar approaches to expose the uh, anidu. So also I already keep the extra cranial vertebra arteries here. You see the uh, anidu here. So my, uh, so I'm cutting a uh, arachnoid here. So the, here is a distal side of a vertebral artery. So my young resident uh, try to do the uh, proximal trapping, so like this. Also, uh, he, he did the uh, distal trapping like this. And then I performed the internal debulking and the total removal of the, uh, this uh, uh, anism. So I got the uh, anism roll. You see the inside. So thrombosis. Very hard, so they uh, use a uh, sonopeta or accuser. Like this. So, oh, you, you see the unusual wall, the dentate ligaments. I'm uh, separating gently from the uh, surface of medulla, like this. Here is the medulla. And then total removal like this. So transmastoid approaches. Uh, Maybe I don't have enough time. The transmastoid approach is, is uh, very useful for trans lab, uh, combined trans approach, and the trans jugular high cervical approaches. So this is a, a transmastoid approach for acoustic neuroma, uh, without pre preservation of the, uh, uh, hearing. I will skip that video. So also, um, this is a, a jugular foramen neuronoma. Uh, I perform a trans jugular approach and a gross total removal of the tumor. So fortunately, uh, after surgery, uh, this guy's hearing and the facial nerve palsy uh, recovered to nearly normal like this. So also, uh, another case, uh, this lady's facial spasm and lower cranial nerve disturbance and has been recovering. So maybe finally, I don't have enough time under this anterotranspetral approach. Anterotranspetral approach is extrajural subtemporal approaches to, to, to reach to the pacribus and, uh, uh, petrous apex. And uh, so posterior transpetrol approach is, uh, uh, be a mastodectomy and a posterior petrodectomy uh, to uh, the, uh, front of a brainstem. Chris. So this is my skin incision of the anterior transpetrous approaches. So it's a very difficult to identify the landmark. And, uh, so uh, we can uh, remove the uh, petrous apex uh, between the arcade eminence, uh, avoid the cochlea, 
and the GSPN and the Posture border of V3 and the Petra Switch. So there and we can export the Posture Fossa Jura and the IAC and the cochlea is here in internal uh inferior petrol silence and the clivus and GSPN C6. Uh this is a third branch, uh, uh second branch of a trigeminal nerve and then so I am cutting the uh dura from the temporal to the posterior fossa dura and then cutting the tentorium to preserve the fossa nerve like this. And then we have to take care of the spinal petrol vein and the other uh, uh, venous malformation. The most important is uh, how to preserve the six nap. Sometimes the tumor that invaded to the uh, six nap, uh, I mean the, uh, the uh, Dorello's canal. So they so like this. And then so well, sometimes I left the tumor uh, part of the tumor. And but a tumor, this kind of a tumor, uh, growing again, and I gave the sometimes the um, I, second surgery like this, and his six nerve palsy recovered and within six months. So combined transpetal up maybe last one. So I will skip like this. Then. So um, this guy uh, uh, suffered get disturbance and ataxia and hearing loss. I performed trans uh, combined transpetrol approaches. So this is the left side uh, petrol uh, cryo meningioma. I uh, made a, a large C-shaped skin incision. So I identified the root of zygoma and the mastoid chip and the acerium. I'm performing a mastoidectomy first to expose a, a sigmoid sinus and a pre-sigmoid area. This. Uh, usually leave the, uh, So, the, so that you can see the, uh, the, the labyrinth. There, this is a superior vestibule. Uh, sorry, no, I'm sorry. So, so the superior semicircular canal, posterior, lateral, uh, the mastoid antrum. Here is the incus like this, and uh, the facial over there. So then I perform the craniotomy. And also, I performed anterior transpetrolar. You see the arcade eminence, IAC dura, cochlea, and the third branch of a trigeminal. I'm uh, performing a, a dural opening and the tentorium, cutting a tentorium. The, so you see the trigeminal over there. Like this. I'm separating the tumor from the trigeminal gently. And then finally, I found the fourth nerve, trochlear nerve. I'm elevating a tumor from the brainstem like this. Here is a brain stem. So depends on, on the um, adhesion on that uh, surface of a brain stem. We have to need uh, to leave the uh, tumor capsule. So uh, still uh, performing the internal debulking like this by using a CUSA like this. So this is a final view of the, this uh, the combined transpetal approaches. Usually I use uh, uh, abdominal fat to, do, to prevent a CSF leak and a uh, temporal fascia like this. So 
after surgery, MRI. Just uh, I uh, left uh, that small piece of the uh, tumor capsule uh, on the brain stem, and his uh, co- uh, symptom recovered almost to the normal. The another case. So uh, sometimes the uh, uh, I can uh, improve the patient hearing uh, after transcondylar approaches like this. So maybe uh, this is a final um, uh, PowerPoint slide. Then expose is everything for safer and easy surgery. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much f- uh, for the presentation, Dr. Samishima. Uh, it is indeed very insightful and dynamic with all the media you just uh, presented. Uh, we are very thankful. Uh, we, we have just a few questions for you. Uh, okay. if you could be so kind to answer them. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, uh, the first one is, uh, would you recommend a resection of the of uh, intradural cavernal angioma at the complicated mm-hmm. location yeah. like uh, the foramen magno because of the high risk of, of fatal... Yeah, uh, very high, high risk of surgery. Yeah, and uh, I um, usually I choose uh, approaches uh, to most uh, nearly segment of the brainstem, uh, brain, uh, I mean the tumors, and uh, usually I use a little sigmoid, and sometimes I use a fo- from the fourth ventricle to uh, after opening the foramen uh, magnum. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. And well, uh, the second one is. Uh, which would be the surgical approach for a patient with uh, OCD or refractory uh, depression who is candidate for DBS and uh, we want to target like a um, uh, frontal lobe target like uh, area 25, the anterior cranial fossa. Will it be like a skull based uh, surgical approach? Excuse me, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't understand your question. Um, say again, please. Yes, in, in a patient uh, who is candidate for uh, DBS. DBS? Uh, uh-huh, for deep brain stimulation. For what? Uh-huh. Uh, uh, and uh, his target is in area 25, which is in the frontal lobe. Uh, which uh, approach would be like... Um, best for this patient? DBS? Yes. You mean the DBS? Um, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't have experience of DBS and, uh, um, by myself and uh, another, you know, another um, staff and uh, uh, performed the DBS for Parkinson's disease and uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't have experience of DBS. And, sorry. Oh, okay, no, no problem. And that, that's that's all the questions we, we have for you. Mm-hmm. We are very thankful again uh, for the presentation, Dr. Mm-hmm. Samishima, and we we appreciate the, the Thank you very much. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.